What's up everyone, this is Chris with Cowdog Craftworks and today I'm going to show you how I made this glass fiber reinforced concrete patio table with inlaid live edge maple and a DIY castle jointed shoshugi band base. This is my first outdoor project for the channel so stick around and check out the build. Mmm, maple. If you've seen my video on the Live Edge box, you'll recognize this spalted maple Live Edge slab. This is the last of it, so if you're tired of it now, say no more fam. I used a track saw to rip one straight edge on the slab and then measured halfway to split it down the middle for the split top effect I'm trying to achieve. I then sanded everything down and used a card scraper to remove the burn marks from the track saw cut. Using a block plane, I broke the edges with a small chamfer and drove some screws into the back to give the concrete a little something extra to grab onto. To seal out the maple, I mixed up some 1 to 1 tabletop epoxy and applied it to the wood with a foam brush. The nice thing here is that I'm really just going for one show side, so the side with the screws in it, while still receiving epoxy, doesn't need to be perfect since the concrete is going to cover it, and I can be as sorority sloppy with that as I need to be. I then used a propane torch to break the surface tension and release any bubbles in the epoxy. After cure, I started to build the molds, breaking down a 4x8 sheet of melamine with the track saw. It probably goes without saying at this point, but if you don't have a track saw, you can use a circular saw and a straight edge for those straight cuts. If you don't have a circular saw and straight edge, I really can't help you at this point, and the world may end. Back at the table saw, I ripped some strips for the size of the mold. Since I wanted a 2 inch thick top, I went with 2 and 3 quarter inch strips to account for the 3 quarter inch bottom of the melamine. I then used this trusty cordless hot glue gun to set the long sides of the mold in place. And then I cross cut the ends of the mold using a circular saw and this DFM Toolworks small carpenter square as a fence. I drilled and countersunk some drywall screws into the ends and sides of the mold to make sure that everything was secure and checked for square again. With help from John Combs of Combs Design, we prepped the molds by rubbing everything down with paste wax and taping the faces of the inlay. Then inspired by Mike Clifford, industrial maker, we used silicon caulk and a fondant tool to caulk the inside seams of the mold. This was our first time using the fondant tool for caulk application and we're stunned by how easy it was to create a perfect bead in the corner no matter how you laid your caulk. Check out Mike, master cock handler, for his much more detailed versions of cock talk. After the cock dried, we peeled away the excess and then wiped the inside of the mold with mineral spirits to clean out all the paste wax. The maple wasn't settling totally flat in the mold, so we clamped a 2x4 call down to keep it as flat as possible. Then my man John Combs started off by blending the modifier with the concrete for the face mix and adding in a touch of water. Since the mix was a bit light, we added a bit of charcoal pigment to give us a better gray color. Then we loaded it into a hopper gun and got to spraying. John didn't mention how messy the spray process was and neither of us are wearing any dust masks. His is right there sitting on the dust collector. I highly advise you to wear a mask when spraying this stuff. I'm wetting the corners and the walls of the face coat with a foam brush and water to keep it moist before applying the backer. This is extra critical for bonding the backer. Then after John mixed the backer, we got to dumping and smushing. Highly technical terms. Just making sure the backer was pressed into the corners and against the walls of the mold to bond to the face coat. We really could have mixed more backer, but we pushed everything outward to ensure that we had at least a 2 inch thick edge for the tabletop. Mm -hmm. 
We then troweled the surface and again made sure to have a nice thick with two C's wall against the mold. The next day after cure we popped the molds which is definitely a butt clenching experience. We unscrewed the molds and chipped off the excess over the edge of the mold with a beater chisel. If you like what you see be sure to do the trio. Like, comment, and subscribe. Also go ahead and hit the notifications bell so that you never miss a new video from me. For more daily content, check me out on my social channels, and if you want to get some of the tools I use, head over to my Amazon storefront linked in the description below. I try to keep things interesting here, so let me know in the comments if there's anything in particular you'd like to see on this channel. <laughs> so as you can see, we didn't think too far ahead, and our call is completely bonded into the tabletop. So as a solution here, I'm just going to ruin John's Japanese pull saw and using the rip teeth, uh, get this thing out of here. To get everything trimmed up nicely, we sanded the bottom edges using diamond pads and diamond stones. There was a slight valley where the maple met the concrete, so I went ahead and did a very shallow epoxy pour over the maple again to make sure that the top was perfectly flush. This tabletop epoxy is self-leveling, so it filled the valley quite nicely. After it was cured, I used a block plane and a card scraper to take down a majority of the excess epoxy before sanding. I then hit the whole top with diamond pads before taking it back to my shop to hit it with a base coat of Real Milk Paint Company's Pure Tongue Oil. Pure Tongue Oil can be used as an all natural sealing finish for concrete. I poured it on thick and let it set in a bit before wiping off the excess. I did this process a couple times over a few days just to ensure there was a solid base layer that was soaked into the concrete. Now to the base. This is a four post castle jointed base with a shoshuki band finish. If you're not familiar with a castle joint, it's a half lap joint acting as the tenon in a four way mortise, resulting in an incredibly strong and stable joint. Here we've got four castle joints on the bottom and another four up top, which is going to create an incredibly sturdy and rigid base for us. So this starts on the chop saw getting everything to length, namely 28 inch legs out of cedar four by fours and rough cutting some two by four stretchers. Then I'm setting the miter saw to 45 degrees to bevel the ends of the stretchers for a nice aesthetic and a bit of angular support on the base and the top. Then I'm just marking out the thickness of the tenon essentially on the 4x4 leg post before breaking out the tenon jig and the dado stack to hog out a majority of the material. This isn't going to get me all the way to where I need to go because the blade's too small, but I'll get most of the material out and give me a starter line to work off of with other tools. When using a jig like this, I definitely suggest to have everything clamped, move slowly, and have a secure grip on everything to avoid kickback. To get the rest of the waste, I used my marking gauge to set a line and then my benchtop bandsaw to hit the wall lines of the mortise. My blade got cooked pretty dull, so instead of using the bandsaw to hog out the rest of the waste, I went full Christian Bexvoort with a chisel to clear out the rest of the mortise by hand. For the half laps on the top and bottom, I similarly laid out my joint and set the depth of the dado stack. Using my miter gauge, a backstop, and a stop block, I managed to hog out the rest of the ways for the stretchers on the top and bottom of the table.
To assemble, I added some glue to the inside of the mortises and popped everything together. Glue isn't really necessary here since I'll drive a fastener in too, but as the Wood Whisperer once said, I'm kind of a belt and suspenders guy. I then used a Forstner bit to bore a hole to accommodate the screw head, and then a big ass drill bit to drill a pilot hole for these 6 and 3 quarter outdoor rated flat lock fasteners to make sure this entire thing is tight and solid. If there's any doubts on the stability of this base, hopefully this little test here should put it to bed. Despite the fact that I'm kind of a little dude and, you know, this isn't the most aggressive of weight testing that I could possibly offer. But, as you can very well see, we good. Part of the reasoning behind those large fasteners is that I wanted to do the Shoshugi band treatment and burn the whole base to a black alligator skin finish. And I definitely had some trust issues as far as glue joints just being held together by glue. Roll that beautiful burn footage. If you're not familiar with Shoshugi Ban, it's an ancient Japanese wood burning technique that provides weather resistance to wood. It's been primarily used on siding, but honestly, it works great on furniture and also looks hella cool. To further protect the wood, I'm going to use Total Boat's Halcyon Outdoor Water Based Varnish. This is my first time using Halcyon, so it's hard to say how it's going to hold up long term, but as far as application, this stuff was awesome. There's no sanding between coats, and I used an HVLP sprayer. If you choose to spray, I would definitely recommend diluting with 20% water per the instructions to help lower the viscosity. This can also be brushed on with a foam brush and that won't require any dilution. I sprayed the base with multiple thin to medium coats, as well as a plywood substrate that I would later inlay into the concrete slab with construction adhesive. I just used some loose weights and clamps to keep everything down. The next day I drilled these mending straps into the base with outdoor rated screws and fired a pan head screw from the underside into the plywood substrate to attach the top. If you've seen my other videos, you know the importance of not confusing your finish with your whiskey. Here, I'm mixing up some pure tongue oil with natural beeswax as a final finish coat on the concrete. The beeswax begins to firm up almost immediately on application, so I rubbed it in pretty vigorously before scraping the excess with a flexible scraper and then hand buffing off with these blue shop rags. I waited one week for a full cure on the finish. And just like that, we are done, folks. I really enjoyed this project and the opportunity to experiment with a different medium in GFRC that I'd never worked with before. And I love the look of the contrast between the live edge and charcoal concrete, as well as the continuous grain pattern of the live edge maple. The base is extra stable, weather resistant, and that deep alligator skin burn is one of my favorite looks out there. If you made it this far, you might like some of my other videos on my channel, so be sure to check those out as well. And if there's anything you'd like to see me do in the future, please be sure to let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for tuning in, and see you next time here at Cowdog Craftworks. Hey, hey.